Hi, my name is Stephen Black, and I'm about to talk about augmented reality and autonomous vehicles. This is uh, this video is based on a presentation I did in July in Detroit at a place called The Collider at a company called Altimetric. And I'd like to thank them because it was a great little presentation. But that was in July, and now it's September, and I've learned quite a bit since then, so I'm updating this PowerPoint as we speak. Um, one of the things that's become very clear to me since July and it was a relief actually, was that my perception of augmented reality was not fully complete. Um, my experiences with augmented reality were, well, we have a device and then we have the augmented reality experience. It was always one person, one device to one experience. For example, Snapchat, Facebook uh, filters. Um, when you put something on somebody's face, it's the camera and someone's face. Um, in industry, the examples that I saw with bicycles and jet engines and all kinds of things was one viewing device <clears throat> and one object. But thanks to a podcast, I believe it's called AR, <clears throat> AR Podcast, I'll check that, but it was an interview with a number of people from the Open Augmented Reality Cloud. And when I listened to that video, when I, when I listened to that audio, Wow, I, my understanding was greatly, greatly deepened. And I, now I'm actually uh, somewhat involved with them. I'm humbled to say that because they're all super, super technical, very clever people and I'm basically self-taught. But what I learned was, and this is the reality of, uh, the reality of augmented reality, <clears throat> is that it's a huge network. Um, uh, Charlie Fink, uh, who's written a couple of books about augmented reality says, we're painting the world with data. And I really didn't understand that. And I think what I, now my understanding of augmented reality is that it will be everywhere. Are we going to have smart glasses? Are we always going to be using our phones? Not necessarily, but there will be a lot of coded data stored in buildings, for example, um, in specific locations. Um, there's a term <clears throat> that I learned called geoposing. And geoposing means that you can put an AR experience. For example, Apple has done something with some artists. Snapchat did something with some artists. So let's say we have an artwork and we want to put it on the corner of Times Square. Well, before with, with our phone, we could see it. One person could see it. And it was locked into one position like Pokemon Go. Now, what puzzled me was, what if we have a lot of people? What if we're moving? What if we want that sculpture to be moving? What if we want that sculpture to be giving information? One of the points that is important to keep in mind with augmented reality is that it's data. It could be live video. It could be audio. It could be a newscast. It could be traffic reports. It can be music. It can be any sort of data. <clears throat> now, because my interest was in autonomous vehicles and actually bicycles as well, I started to think, what if we're moving on a bicycle? And we were listening to a, a, pod, a podcast about the Empire State Building. Well, as, if we're on our bicycle and we're approaching the Empire State Building, does the signal suddenly appear? Or is it, I didn't know how it worked, but thanks to this, this uh, podcast featuring the <clears throat> augmented, I'm sorry, the open air, open air, <laughs> open augmented reality cloud founders or some people seriously involved with that, I, I really understood. So before I go any further and before I talk too much more about this, I'm going to close this video, but I'm going to say, please go to the website for the open augmented reality cloud uh, organization. And if you're serious about augmented reality, you really have to download their document. I believe it's called State of the Open Augmented Reality Cloud. <clears throat> it's, it explains things very, very clearly. And it, it's such a complex issue because now I'm mentioning the issue of mo movement with autonomous vehicles. That's a very serious issue, <clears throat> not only because of the passengers might want some augmented reality entertainment, but the car itself, which is a computer on wheels, might be reading augmented reality from other cars, from objects like street signs or pedestrians or e-bikes. It's really uh, 
simply augmented reality is huge. It involves motion, geography, all kinds of things. It's basically as complex, but much more powerful and bigger than the internet. So I'm not uh, so good on these technical issues, but again, go to the Open Augmented Reality Cloud and download that document if you're serious about uh, augmented reality. Thank you. I'm next video will be I'm going to go into uh, this actual topic of augmented reality and autonomous vehicles. Thank you.